During the month of April in China, Tesla and Legacy Auto were absolutely killed. Chinese electric car manufacturers took more market share than they have ever in the history of the country. EVs represented 29% of all vehicle sales, which is a new record. Now, this is actually a pretty amazing accomplishment. And what it means is that Chinese companies who are taking over the auto market in many developing countries are flooding those markets or soon will with EVs. This is a pretty big benefit because currently in developing markets, Japanese automakers have primary market share. Japanese automakers could not care less about electric cars, and not interested in, in them and have no plans to make a lot of them. For example, Toyota plans on only making 14% of its cars EVs in 2029. So although this might sound negative, that's the positive side of Chinese EV brands doing so well in 2022. Hello, my friends, and welcome. channel on the electric viking great to see you thank you for subscribing thank you for supporting the channel welcome to all the new subscribers and welcome back everyone else i hope you've had an awesome day the chinese market has been but plug-in scored over 260,000 registrations in april that's up 61 percent year over year so you can see the chinese auto market right in april was just decimated and still electric cars we're up 61% versus the same month last year. That's an incredible accomplishment. What's even more incredible about that is that Tesla is basically not represented in those figures at all. Tesla deliveries in China were almost nothing in April. Those vehicle deliveries, those electric car deliveries are coming from just Chinese auto companies only. I mean, if Tesla hadn't have been shut down during the month of April, imagine what the numbers would have been. Share-wise, Fully electric vehicles accounted for 22%. The other 7% were plug-in hybrids. So far for the year, 17% of all cars sold in China have been fully electric, 5% plug-in hybrids for a total of 22% for the year. Now, as you can see, April, those figures were much higher for electric cars. If electrification continues at this pace in China, which and despite the naysayers who I think act very emotionally, they don't like facts and figures. They prefer to just talk about kind of emotional things like there's not enough batteries. There's not enough batteries. Ah, it can't happen. And I, and I say to them, okay, how many batteries will we have in 2025? You know what they do? They react emotionally and they, they say things like you're an idiot. You're, you're, you're a moron. You just love EVs. You don't know what you're talking about. And I say, no, but seriously, how many battery factories are in production right now? How many batteries will we have in 2025? They can't handle that kind of question. It's too logical. There's a very good chance that 90 plus percent of all vehicles sold in 2025 in China will be electric. Why? Because battery factories are going up there at an incredible pace. Absolutely staggering pace. Now, what does this all mean? China alone accounted for over half of all EV registrations last month. That's even during these insane lockdowns that were going on in the country. Amazingly, the top 20 plug-in vehicles in China, the top 20 were all Chinese car brands, every single one of them. BYD had seven of the top 10. Who were the others? Wuling Hongwan Mini EV was first place again. Then we've got BYD, 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 BYD. <laughs> then we've got Leap Motor, then Cherry, then Chang'an, then Cherry again, then Hose on Auto, then Hose on Nita, then GAC, then BYD again, BYD again, Dong Feng, then Li Auto, then Xpeng, then Xpeng. And yeah, that's the top 20. Just dominated completely by Chinese car companies. Now, of course, Tesla would have been in this list if they hadn't have been completely shut down for almost the entire month. First place, numbers coming from Clean Technica. With 27,000 registrations in April alone, the tiny four-seater Wuling Hongwan Mini won another best-seller title. That's its fourth. Now, the great news is a new model is coming out. It's bigger than the current model. 
It'll have a bigger battery pack, a 26 kilowatt hour battery pack, which is massive for the size of this car. It's gonna give the vehicle at least 300 kilometers of real world range. And honestly, the better thing than all of that, they're exporting this car globally to many different markets around the world. Yeah, sure, maybe not to the US. Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, you guys are all telling me that the Silverado's over there and the F-150 is going to just run them over and crush them and they're going to be, everyone who drives one will be dead. So don't worry, they're not sending them to the US anyway. They're sending them, they're sending them to a bunch of third world, not third world, sorry, developing countries, developing countries. And they're going to send them to Europe. And you're probably saying, well, they don't need registrations, right, right? Can you ride a bicycle on the road? Can you ride an electric scooter? Can you ride an electric bicycle? You can't. They're a lot safer than those, aren't they? There you go. Now, a car that I did a review on recently, BYD Dolphin, which is going to be a global car coming to many countries in the West, coming to Australia soon, coming to the UK, coming to all of Europe pretty much as well, and much of Southeast Asia. The Dolphin is an amazing car in my view for the price. I'll put a link in the description below to my review of that car. You should check that out. Now, incredibly, BYD had four models in the top five, four of the top five. Crazy. You can see why their share price has barely been affected by all the drama in the share market recently. And to those of you who, um, you know, followed my advice, not the Australians, because I can't tell you what to do or advise you on anything. But for those of you who followed my advice last year and bought BYD shares, then well done to you if you've held on to your stock. Because yes, the share market has been decimated. People have been selling at massive losses, but now is not the time to sell. In my view, now is the time to hold and wait. Be confident in your initial investment. Now, there's a number of new models coming from BYD. One of them is called the Seagull, and there's a few others as well. I'll put links in the description below to the new models coming from BYD, some pretty exciting stuff. What about the top 20 plug-in vehicles in China from January to April of 2022? Once again, there's no Volkswagen. Ah, shock horror. <laughs> you might think this doesn't matter, but 50% of Volkswagen's global profit comes from China. So yeah, they're in trouble. There's no one here from Mercedes. Well, no one here from Audi. Oh, no one here from um, BMW. Oh, no Toyotas. Well, there you go. There's actually no Japanese automakers here. Um, no one here from Europe. They're all Chinese or Tesla. First place, as you would expect, is the Wuling Hongwan Mini. Second, the BYD Song Pro Plus. Third, the Tesla Model Y. Fourth, once again, another BYD. Fifth, the BYD Dolphin. Sixth, the BYD Han EV. There's a new version of that coming out. BYD actually got 45,000 pre-orders of this new version within six hours of pre-orders opening. The demand there is massive. BYD actually have more than 500,000 pre-orders for their cars. Crazy. Then of course, after that, you've got the BYD Tang. There's a new version of the Tang coming out as well. It'll have a much longer range. The top model will have 108 kilowatt hour lithium ion phosphate battery, giving it around 700 kilometers of range. And then the rest of the list is filled out with a bunch of different EV manufacturers, including GAC Aon, Hoson Nida, Great Wall, the Aura Goodcat. Goodcat is coming to many countries, Europe, it's already in Thailand, coming to Australia, yep, good news, coming to the UK, I think as well. Then you've got Leap Motor, Xpeng, and of course, Neo will be further down that list. Now, because of the low Tesla deliveries, or very almost non-existent Tesla deliveries during April, the BYD Song Fev plug-in hybrid is the new silver medalist so far for the year in China, pushing the Tesla Model Y down to third place, while the Tesla Model 3 fared even worse, falling five positions all the way down to 10th. This has benefited BYD vehicles, like the Dolphin, which is now in fifth, the Han EV in sixth, and the Tang in eighth. What are the top auto brands in China's plug-in vehicle market so far this year? Well, number one, of course, is BYD, which owns 28% of the market. Number two, SGMW, which owns 10.3%. Number three is Tesla with 8%. Number four is Cherry with around 5%. And number five is GAC with 4%. 
So the biggest news here, BYD are up an incredible 129% year on year. You're probably wondering, how the hell has this happened? I mean, how is BYD able to increase its production by this amount when this whole COVID shutdown is just crippling China? Well, it's only crippled parts of China. Fortunately for BYD, their main production sites are in Changsha and Shenzhen, while the lockdowns were mostly in Shanghai and other cities in China. BYD has emerged largely unscathed, but they are saying that they're having issues getting some parts for their cars. They would be producing a lot more cars right now. I mean, of course, they've got 500,000 pre-orders. They want to satisfy that demand, and they can't. But fortunately, because the lockdowns haven't affected them as much as, or nowhere near as much as companies like Tesla, they've been able to emerge from this situation pretty much unscathed. Now, along with Europe, well, actually, no, not along with Europe. To be honest, just by itself now, China really is leading the world with electric vehicle manufacturing, with battery manufacturing. And honestly, even though we criticize China a lot, we've got to say, we've got to call out, we've got to be fair. We've got to point out when they're doing things that are positive, not just when they're doing things that are negative. And frankly, this is a staggering result. I have to say, I'm excited. Why am I excited? Because manufacturing of EVs is going crazy in China. Here in Australia, we are starting to import more and more Chinese vehicles. And frankly, I'd much prefer that over Japanese internal combustion engine vehicles when they have no intentions of making EVs in Japan. They're very, very uncommitted to EVs. The Chinese are, so hey, we'll take those EVs and fortunately start to escape some of the pollution, you know, reduce our reduce our global footprint, reduce the global warming going on right now, and just get access to more affordable cars with better technology that aren't going to pollute the planet. And that to me is really exciting. Thank you for listening. Let me know in the comment section below what you think. And as always, have a great day. Bye-bye.